Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Now today we are going to be looking at a different Distress Oxide within the Distress Oxide colour combination series and it's Frayed Burlap. So welcome if you're just joining me. I'm so glad to have you here. The playlist that I have on my channel um, called Distress Oxide Colour Combinations uh, does have or will have every colour in the Distress Oxide range going from A through to whatever the last letter is i don't think it's said <laughs> so uh, we're working through each one alphabetically we're on to frayed burlap so we're on the last of the f's um, the next few videos are going to be quite a few browns and greys it's just how it falls we've got ground espresso we've got gathered twigs but it's nice to see some color combinations with kind of those neutral tones built in because they're really good go-to inks and that's exactly what this one is so i'm going to be doing a color combination with two additional colors and with three additional colors two completely different combinations for you that you can try um, on your craft projects and don't forget of course to share this video to uh, hit the thumbs up and like it and of course if you've not come across me before on YouTube I'd love it if you could subscribe too. Now everything I'm using is linked down below that includes the brushes, the inks, the free download for the Distress Oxide colour chart which I'll come to in a moment but also things like the clear blending mats that I'm using whilst I'm working. So let's get started with frayed burlap. The first thing we need to do is do a little swatch of this so you can see exactly what it looks like. Now first thing to notice is that the ink pad looks a little bit warmer than the label. This doesn't always mean anything though. Sometimes um, once it's put onto white paper because it's so concentrated in the ink pad um, it does look darker or a deeper or richer colour. Um, but let's see how different this is. Yes, so it is a little bit warmer than uh, the label as you can see we're looking at more of a brown than as my label shows is kind of a gray now of course this may not be the case for you because when it comes to printing in any way shape or form there's always going to be color differences now frayed burlap um, I always considered more of a gray but when you look at it like this you can definitely see it's in the within the brown tones so that's you can see beautiful it's actually not too different from a couple of other shades so let's compare this quickly now to those now I've got my distress chart I've pulled out the two uh, the two strips that have the browns on now somebody said to me they um, prefer to use color swatches individually so you've got all the little pieces you can do that with this too if you want to so you can go to my website and my blog you can download this and print it off for free I'm not asking for anything for it you fill it in at home I've actually laminated mine with a matte uh, laminate pocket for each one uh, well three of them fit into one A4 pocket uh, cut them up and I just keep them all together on a clip but I've got them kind of they're kind of in colour groups as you can see but uh, you may prefer to before you laminate if you don't have to laminate them but just cut them into little cubes if that's how you prefer to work keep them on little cards absolutely you can do that too so let's bring this over now frayed burlap let's see where do we have this down the bottom here okay so you can see that's the right color this one's obviously drier so it's always a little bit pale when it's dry but also of course I've got my matte laminate on there that might have a little bit of an effect but this is still damp at the moment when we look at brushed corduroy it's so so similar it's unbelievable <laughs> um, gathered so we've got a brushed corduroy here we've got vintage photo not too dissimilar but vintage photo definitely has more of a red tone to it gathered twigs again is quite a bit darker um, and walnut stain is much darker again just coming over here just to check you've only really got antique linen is a much much lighter shade uh, much more creamy and ground espresso so you can see there um, you've owned we've actually got two colors that are very very similar so brushed corduroy and gathered twigs so as I always say, if you are not in a position to be purchasing all the Distress Oxides, I would say for this brown grey colour, uh, you could go for frayed burlap, gathered twigs or brushed corduroy. I mean, even vintage photo, those four can kind of interlink for now until you start building up your stash if you're looking at getting your first brown. OK, so I hope that helps some of you. Let's just pop this to the side. And let's do our first colour com combination. So let's clean our mat. 
just give that a little bit of a wipe and we're going to start with another brown so this is quite a neutral combination and I'm going to go with tea dye which is again one of the browns but it's quite a warm orangey brown and black soot now this one's perfect if you want a really neutral um, quite a dark background so you can see this is a lovely warm brown it's almost a peachy orange color to be honest there we go now already our frayed burlap has started drying so I'm just going to bring that up into that colour there, so into the tea dye, just working around in little circles and making sure that everything's blended nicely. So you've got those two colours and you see how they do work really nicely together. I could probably do a bit more work on uh, blending those, but you can hopefully see where we're at with those. So let's have another quick clean. There we go, just wipe off the moisture. So then we're going to go into black soot, which might sound unusual, but actually black soot um, within the Distress Oxide range is more of a grey. It's a dark grey, just a bit like charcoal really, of course the ideal name, black soot, um, and it does work beautifully into the browns. If you're looking for a sort of a masculine tone here, something that's uh, quite deep and moody, you never know. <laughs> Let's just pick up some frayed burlap here. If you want to go a bit steampunk, a bit vintage, this is going to just be perfect for you. There we go. Okay, now I think this is definitely one of those combinations. Because of the lack of colour in this, I'm going to bring in my water spritz. I think this is going to just pick that up. And I, sometimes I feel you actually see the combination and how well it works together better when you've got that texture in there. So I've just spritzed some water on the top. While that's working, because uh, distress oxides are water reactive, so they're going to react to that water that I've just popped on there. And just give that a moment. Now that's that water's now starting, as you can see, to react. Let's pick that up, lift up the excess, so you can sort of reveal a bit of the white cardstock underneath, and some of those damp areas will continue to work but yeah lovely I really like that I would quite happily put that with um, maybe some neutral tones like um, some textures like hessian and such maybe some wood embellishments maybe I'd go and throw in a splash of color in there as well um, that would be really nice you could actually put a nice bright orange like say for example rusty hinge that would work really nicely on the end here if you want a pop of color you could go this way you could go into a deep blue or a purple you, know, you can really um play with this because it is a neutral base you can kind of slot in a color even a red anywhere you want to so that's the first color combination there for you with frayed burlap so that was black soot and tea dye with frayed burlap in the middle so let's pop this to the side and let's do another one now this one I'm going to bring in it's four colors again it's quite quite I like to say moody I quite like that word for uh, color combinations but this one's got a little more color to it so we're going into some greens so we've got ground espresso which I'm going to actually put on first so let's bring in my brushes and all the labels for the brushes that I've got the labels that I've got on my um, ink pads as well they're all available to download from my website. Again, that's all linked below where the Distress Oxide colour chart is linked. You, you can go to my website and you can find all the free downloads in one place. So ground espresso, first of all, blending that into the end. Now, I'm not going to go too far in with that because it is a deep, dark colour and I don't want it to be too, too dark. And then frayed burlap. And because these two are similar colours, I'm not worrying about cleaning my blending mat in between the two but I will do for the next shades so there frayed burlap just blending in again with what was left on my ground espresso into the end so again lovely combination I have a bit more frayed burlap to put there to make sure that blend is perfect there we go okay so again let's give this a wipe now whenever I'm doing these combinations don't forget you can pick out 
two or three colors from each combination you don't have to um, do the entire combination but you can pick out a couple of colors and just use them within your paper craft projects so um, if for example you like uh, the, just these two together go ahead and use those look how nicely they blend together beautiful uh, then I'm going to go into iced spruce so I'm going to pick up this one put this down quite heavy I want this to be one of sort of really the hero uh, color of this combination and I love 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 ice spruce I cannot wait to get to that one and do some color combinations with it just going to blend that line again with just with what was left on my um, my brush from frayed burlap but because I've now picked up a bit of ice spruce on there I'm going to give it a wipe and then reapply a little bit more through the middle and bring that in there so again give that a wipe make sure we're not putting too much green into the brown that's quite a nice nice way of doing it again just give that a quick wipe we're now going to go into the darkest so for example if you just like those colors together which are beautiful ice spruce frayed burlap and ground espresso go ahead and use those and then for a pop of color on the end I'm going to use pine needles so again a dark color and as I do with my dark colors I just like to pop a little on the end there and then work at blending that into the color next to it so working in small circles into the ice spruce just touching where they meet and working in tiny tiny circles if you work in big circles you're going to drag that color over into the area where you just want um, solid color and you don't want the blend so just work in small circles and then we've got a pop of color on the end isn't that lovely so let's take a look again at what colors we used here so we've got ground espresso frayed burlap ice spruce and pine needles for that color isn't that just absolutely beautiful i love that so you've got two different color combinations there that you can be trying all using frayed burlap i hope this has helped some of you if you're looking at your browns and your grays and you're a bit sort of confused as to which is which definitely i would always recommend do yourself a color chart a swatch chart doesn't have to be my free downloadable one you can um, do any one you want just make your own up if you need to uh, but I, this really helps you notice and recognize um, the shades and the tones of each of the colors and how they look together as well so i hope you can join me for the next video which again will be another brown but a different brown this time and we'll do completely different color combinations to keep things interesting please do go back and look at the other videos and i would love it if you could drop me um, a thumbs up on this video if you liked it enjoyed it leave me a comment as well what you think to this color at the end of the day it is a neutral um, but i think you'll find you'll use it quite a lot okay take care everybody and i'll see you again very soon